Okay, let's go through these problems. So number one says a bouncy rubber ball and a wet lump of clay, both a mass M, are thrown at a wall. Both strike the wall at speed V, but although the wall bounces off with no loss of speed, the clay sticks. What are the changes in momentum of the clay and ball, respectively? So you've got, um, in one case, a ball hitting the wall and sticking. In the other case, you've got a ball hitting the wall and bouncing back. So you had to lose MV for this ball, MV amount of energy, and then went to zero. For this ball, you had MV, it went to zero, and then the wall pushed it back to give MV back out. So that's a total change of MV to zero, and then zero back to MV. So that's a change of two uh, MV, okay? Trash. Next. Uh, a large semi-trailer truck and a small car have equal momentum. How do their speeds compare? Okay, in order for them to have equal momentum, that means the combination of m times v has to be the same. So mass times velocity. The large semi-trailer truck has big m, so it's going to have little v, and the small car is going to have low m, but it's going to have high v. Um, truck has 200, 800 kilograms. If the velocity of the truck is 20 meters per second, what's its momentum? That would be 800 times 20 mv. If the truck is brought to a complete stop, what is the magnitude of the impulse that must be imparted to it? Well, you have to take that uh, 16,000 16, uh, newton seconds and put it to zero. Uh, so that's that. Um, and remember, the impulse is force times time. That is equal to the change in momentum. If it takes eight seconds to bring the truck to a stop, what is the magnitude of the force required to stop it? So that's F delta T is equal to change in momentum. So we divide that 16,000 newton seconds divided by eight seconds, and it's uh, 2,000 newtons. Okay. Complete the sentences correctly. Stunt car A and B are identical cars with the same mass of 38 kilograms. They are both traveling at this speed. Stunt car A crashes into a brick wall, whereas stunt car B crashes into a big soft mattress. They both come to a complete stop after the impart, impact. Okay, so this is F delta T is equal to change in momentum. So they all have the same change in momentum, delta MV, but the uh, delta T is different, okay? The impulse, F delta T. So if they have the same delta M, Okay, so we have F delta T is equal to change in momentum. If they both experience the same change in momentum, but the stunt car A crashes into a brick wall, it's going to have a big force over a little time, whereas the other ones, you're going to have a smaller force but a longer time, and the combination of them are going to be uh, uh, what you care about. Um, and this is why stunt car A... <coughs> Excuse me, stunt car A will uh, have more damage. Okie dokie, next. Two ice skaters, Ann and Steve, face each other while at rest, then they push against each other's, each, push against each other's hands. The mass of Steve is twice that of Ann's. How do their speeds compare after they push off? Um, so you have uh, an initial momentum of zero, and then they push off and they travel in opposite directions. And whatever Steve has, his momentum, MV, has to equal her momentum, MV, okay? And it's going to be mass of Steve, velocity of Steve, mass of Ann, velocity of Ann. Uh, and since the mass of Steve is twice that of Ann, so we're going to have 2MAVS is equal to MAVS, VA, sorry. Then the question is, how do their speeds compare? Okay, the MA is going to cancel, and you're going to have that um, Ann is going to go twice as fast as, uh, so you have 2 velocity of Steve is equal to velocity of Ann. So that means Ann's velocity is twice that of Steve's. Okay, delete. Uh, next, consider a completely elastic head-on collision between two particles that have the same mass and the same speed. What are the velocities of the particles after the collision? Um, two particles have the same mass, same speed. They head last. They collide head on, um, and it's an elastic collision, so they bounce off. Okay, so what are the velocities? So this one, uh, oops, let's do that. The, this one here is coming in. This one is coming in. They're going to collide. This one's going to put its momentum into that one, and this one's going to put its momentum into that one. So they're just going to bounce off, um, and they're going to have the same uh, velocities, but they're just going to switch direction. Okay, delete. Next. Two small identical steel balls collide completely elastically. 
Uh, initially, ball one is moving with velocity v1 towards ball two, and ball two is stationary. What are the final velocities of one and two, respectively? So if you have um, one at rest and the other moving, the one that's moving is going to hit the one that's at rest, transfer its momentum to it, and so you're going to have the initial ball that was moving when it hits it's going to lose all its momentum go to zero give all of it to the other one that it hit and then that one's going to fly off with the same velocity um, that the other one had originally okay one object moves in the position x direction with speed v positive x direction with speed v another object moves in the opposite direction with the same speed but with one half the mass of the first object the two objects have a completely inelastic collision which means they stick together what is the final x component of the velocity so you're going to have your initial um, momentum is mv. Your final momentum is going to be uh, m plus half m times v final. Okay, mv is equal to, initial is equal to uh, uh, m plus m uh, 3m over 2 times final velocity. And then... Uh, Two, two, yeah, three halves. Okay, and then what is the final x component of the velocity? Um, it is going to be equal to, so we cancel the masses out, and you have 2vi over 3 is equal to the final velocity. Um, one object moves in the positive direction with speed v, another object moves in the opposite direction with the same speed. Oops. Uh, so our initial momentum is going to be 2 m v because we have two objects um and so that's where this uh, half cancel this two cancels out because we have two two over here uh one half and it cancels out okay so then we have v over three because we have two objects one object in the positive x direction with speed v another object moves in the opposite direction with the same speed uh and yes but with one half the mass of the first... Oh, okay, so let me make sure I write this correctly. I'm going to tell you something wrong. Okay, so we have mv plus one half mv. That's what we're starting with. Okay, so then we have... Um, if you add that together, v initial, v initial, then... Um, sorry, minus... Okay, one's moving this direction, one's moving the opposite direction. Okay, so you have one half mvi over two. That's uh, where that's why the two cancels out. So then you have three, uh, one third, v i over three. Okay, at the end of it. Okay. Lead next. A two thousand ninety five pound car is moving at fourteen point eight meters per second. Calculate the magnitude of its momentum. Okay, that's just m v. Uh, so maybe a unit conversion problem. Calculate the momentum of a elephant. Okay, m v. Compare the elephant's momentum with the momentum of a tranquilizer dart fired at 600 meters per second. So, uh, you know, that's 0 0.0455 times 600. So the elephant's got more momentum than the dart, obviously, because when you shoot an elephant with a dart, the dart stops and the elephant barely moves. So that makes sense. What is the momentum of the hunter running after the elephant? And then just MV. Okay, next. Um, what is the momentum of a garbage truck that is 16,500 kilograms and is moving at 10 meters per second? So what is the momentum of a garbage truck that is 16,500 kilograms and is moving at 10 meters per second? Um, MV, at what speed would a 7 kilogram trash can have to move at the same momentum? Okay, set that equal to the mass, 7.35 times V, divide the 2. It is generally a good idea to understand the size of units. Consider objects listed below. And their ladybug weighs 30 milligrams, flies by your head at 2.19 miles an hour. How much momentum is that? Tiny. Tiny little bit. A little boy walks at 2 miles an hour. Okay? More than a ladybug, but not much. I mean, well, yeah, 100,000 times more, but uh, still not compared to the train. How about a car? A thousand times more mo momentum. Uh... Well, not quite a hundred, okay, three, four hundred times more momentum than the, uh, oh, wait a second. Okay, that's 33 to 8,000. Okay, times a hundred would be uh, 3,000, so times 300 or so. 300 times more than the boy. Uh, based on your answers, which of the scenarios likely describes an object possessing a momentum of 
one kilogram meters per second. Okay, so we're looking at the closest one. Uh, it looks like the boy walking at two miles an hour is closest, um, about 30 times less than that. Um, if it was a tiger running, no. If it was a mosquito flying, no. A beetle walking, no. An elephant running, no. So the cat is about 30 times less than the uh, kid. If you divide 70 by 30, you get one pound or so. So it's a little baby kitty. Okay, Bryce, a mouse lover, keeps his four pet mice in a roomy cage where they spend much of their spare time when they're not uh, sleeping or eating, joyfully scampering about on the cage's floor. Bryce tracks his mice's health diligently and now records their mass at this. At this at this very instant, the X and Y components of the mice are this and then. Blah, blah, blah. Calculate X and Y components of Bryce mice's total momentum, PX and PY. Okay, so this is just you add up all the X components, 0.561 plus negative 0.417, plus 0.513, that multiplied by the sum of all their masses, gives you Px, and do the same thing for y. Calculate the final velocity right after a 115 kilogram rugby player who is initially running at 75 meters per second collides head-on with a padded goalpost, experienced backward force, 18,100 newtons for 5.5 uh, times 10 to the minus 2 seconds. Okay, so you get 18,100 newtons force times time, 5.5 times 10 to the minus 2 seconds. That's your impulse. Divide that by uh, the mass, and then subtract the initial velocity, and then that gives you your final velocity. Okay, um, so this is an impulse problem. Professional golfer is examining a video of a practice swing. The high-speed footage shows that his club is in contact with the ball, which is initially at rest on the tee for only 0.871 times 10 to the minus 3 seconds, and the radar gun clocks the speed of the ball at 176 miles an hour after it comes off the club. The golf ball has a mass of 45.9 grams. What is the magnitude of the impulse? Um, so that's uh, the force times delta T is the impulse, and that's the change in momentum. So you went from 0 to 176 miles per hour. So this would be 176 miles per hour times 45.9 grams. Oh, sorry. Yeah, 45.9 grams times 176 miles an hour. So you'd have to do a little bit of unit conversion there. Um, and we can just, to make it easier, we can either go to Wolfram Alpha or Google can do this. So 176 miles per hour times uh, 49.6 grams, whatever it was. And if we do that, we get uh, uh, 3.9 kilograms meters per second, um, or 3.9 newton seconds, whatever one's your fancy. Okay, it's a 45.9. I thought I got it backwards. So about 3. What is the magnitude of the average force of contact? Okay, so you take that 3.61, you divide by 0.871 milliseconds. Um, so we can go to the here and go 45.9, fix that, and then divide by um, 0, 0 0.871 milliseconds. And hit that, and we get... Uh, Yep. Mm, make sure I got all the units, assuming miles per hour. Yep. 45.9. Let me make sure I add my grams in here. Okay, boom. And there we go. 4,000 newtons or so. Okay, and there it is. And that's how you do that. Okie dokie. Uh, a 0 0.150 kilogram lump of clay is dropped from a height of 1.45 meters onto the floor. It sticks to the floor and does not bounce. What is the magnitude of the impulse J imparted to the clay by the floor during the imp impact? Okay, so J, um, F times delta T. So you got your 0 0.150 kilogram lump of clay dropped from 1.45 meters. So if you multiply 1.45 times 0 0.150, that's MGH, and then multiply that by G, that's the energy uh, in the... In the uh, uh, clay, and then right before it hits the ground, it's going to be one half mv squared. Um, and what you want is the impulse is m times change in velocity that right before it hits the ground. Um, so you can solve for that using uh, that energy formula. And the force exerted by the floor on the clay is plotted as the function time over there, triangle. What must have been the maximum force exerted by the floor on the clay? Um, and we can see that the time is 7.5 milliseconds, and then we have a triangle here, 
and we know that um, the area of a triangle is one half base times height. So this area here, underneath here, is one half base times height, and height is gonna be F max, okay? So then the base is 7.5 milliseconds, so we're gonna say one half times T times F max is equal to this area under the curve, which is gonna be um, our total impulse, 0 0.8 uh, kilogram meters per second. And so then multiply by two, divide by the time, and that's gonna be your F max, okay? Next. During a neighborhood baseball game in a vacant lot, a particularly wild hit sends a 0.149 kilogram baseball crashing through the pane of a second floor window in a nearby building. The pane strikes the glass at 15.5 me meters per second, shatters the glass as it passes through, and leaves the window at 11.5 meters per second with no change in direction. Um, what is the direction of the impulse that the glass imparts to the ball? It's going to be opposite to the direction of the ball's motion because it slowed it down. Calculate the magnitude of this impulse. That's just change in MV. So we had 15.5 meters per second down to 11.5 meters per second times the mass. Um, the ball is in contact with the glass for 0 0.0109 seconds. Uh, find the magnitude of the average force. So you divide by delta T and you get your average force. A person slaps her leg with her hand, which results in her hand coming to rest in a time interval of 2.75 mill milliseconds from an initial speed of 3.75 meters per second. What is the magnitude of the average contact force exerted on the leg, assuming the total mass of the hand and the form to be 1.35 kilograms? Okay, um, same thing, MV divided by T gives you the uh, magnitude of the average force, gives you the average force F. Would the contact force on the same hand be any different if the woman clapped her hands together, each with, with an initial speed um, of 3.75 meters per second, if they came come to rest in the same time interval of 2.75 seconds? Um, no, because uh, when the hand slows down, it's going to be the same change in momentum, and that's the only thing that matters for that uh, problem. Okay, we got a car moving, collides with a wall. The figure shows the force exerted on the car by the wall over the collision. What is the magnitude of the velocity or final speed after the collision? So this is uh, F delta T is equal to change in momentum, MV, or change in momentum like this. Okay, so what you have to do is calculate the area here, which is um, the way I do it is half of this uh, because a triangle is one half base times height and I can get that area, so I would calculate that area first, add it to this area, add it to that area, add it to this area, add it to that area, one half base times height, all those, and then uh, that will give me my total impulse F, F delta T, and then uh, once I have that, let me get out of here, once I have that, um, I can solve for my final velocity given my initial velocity of 0.82 meters per second. Okay, an unfortunate astronaut loses his grip during a spacewalk, finds himself floating away from the space station carrying only a rope and a bag of tools. First, he tries to rope, throw a rope to his fellow astronaut, but the rope is too short. In a last-ditch effort, um, the astronaut throws his bag of tools in the direction of his motion away from the space station. The astronaut has a mass of 124. The tools are this, that the astronaut is moving away from the space station at 1.8 meters per second initially. What is the minimum final speed of the bag of tools with respect to the space station that will keep the astronaut from drifting away forever okay so you just need to say he needs to uh, throw the bag of tools opposite the direction so that his new momentum um, will be or at least his new velocity will be 1.8 meters per second okay so his initial momentum uh let's see he's initially moving at 1.8 meters per second so how fast does he have to throw it so that his change in momentum his change in v um will be at least 1.8 meters per second. Um, so you, you want to take your MV and your initial momentum MV, and you want to uh, create by throwing um, the new tools away enough new momentum that direction to push you back in the other direction. Okay, so you're gonna say that his initial MV is equal to his new MV plus the MV of the bag, and then solve for what the bag uh, velocity is okay system of four particles moves in one one dimension the center mass of the system is at rest and the particles do not interact with any of the objects outside the system find the velocity of particle four at t equals one point or two point eight three seconds given the details of motion okay so you got something that looks more complicated than it needs to be um 
you plug in 2.83 seconds into these time variables to get v1 v2 and v3 all at 2.83 seconds okay and then you so you have v1 v2 v3 and that's the velocity of those uh, three particles then you since they're all moving in one dimension what you're going to do is m times that v m times this v m times that v and then m times some unknown v add them all up and set them equal to zero and that should be um it will, you'll be able to solve for the velocity that it needs to be in order to give the center of mass zero change in position or momentum or anything. And you can see that each one of these is positive, uh, so your final answer should be negative because it has to move opposite to, to maintain that center of gravity from not moving. Okay, next. Nate, the skate student, bounce tech, blah, 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 on occasion skate this, hurled himself statue collision as a result isaac started moving backwards or nate speed immediately before and after the collision ignore friction with the ground okay so um you've got mv equals mv and then you've got um, a final velocity 1.41 meters per second um, so you can just solve for uh what those two things are uh a 70 kilogram ice hockey goalie originally at rest has a Hockey puck slapped at him with a velocity of this. Suppose the goalie and the hockey puck have an elastic collision, and the puck is reflected back in the direction from which it came. What would the final velocities of the goalie and the puck be in this case? Uh, assume the collision is completely elastic. So you got the uh, goalie here, and then the puck comes in. So your initial momentum is M puck V puck. That's your initial thing. After the collision, you have M goalie V goalie. And it's an elastic collision, so they uh, the puck blocks bounces off. So uh, plus m puck v puck uh, prime maybe a second m p v p. So the question is, what are the velocities of the two? Okay, so we've got these two velocity uh, two this one equation with two unknowns. So our next one is that the initial energy one half m v squared has to equal one half m v squared of the puck and one half m v squared of the goalie add those two things together and then you've got the initial kinetic energy so then you solve for both of those um problems or both of those velocities using two equations two unknowns so there's a bit of algebra in that problem two manned satellites approach one another with a relative velocity of 2.21 meters per second to the dock the first has a mass of this and the second has a mass of that if the two sat satellites collide elastically rather than dock what is their Final relative velocity. Okay, again, you're going to have m1v1 uh, plus m2v2. They approach one another at this, okay, is equal to uh, m1 final plus m2 final v final and then v final, whatever that is. Okay, and then they collide elastically, which means they bounce off. So you can also do conservation of kinetic energy. Um, and solve for what the final velocity is here. Um, and yeah, okay, delete that one. Next, a falcon catches a dove, catches a dove from behind in mid air. What is the velocity after impact of the falcon's velocity is 29.5 meters per second, and the dove's velocity is 4.5 meters per second in the same direction. Okay, so you've got a falcon it catches a dove, okay, so you they each mv plus mv, that's your initial momentum, then your final momentum is m plus m times v final, so you're going to add those two initial momentums together, and then that's going to equal the final uh, velocity, or the final momentum. Since they snatch it, they the masses have to be combined, and it's a, an inelastic collision. Okay, bullet of mass sense fired into a block of wood. The velocity of this, the block is attached to a spring. Spring constant 205 newtons per meter. The block and bullet continue to move. Compress the spring for 35 centimeters before the whole system momentarily comes to a stop. Assume that the surface on which the block is resting is frictionless. Determine the mass of the wooden block. Okay, so you get uh, the bullet coming with one half, one half, uh, one half mv squared. Hits the thing here. The block absorbs all that energy and then compresses a distance of 23 centimeters, 30, sorry, 35, 35 centimeters, which then stores that kinetic energy into one half mv, uh, one half kx squared, okay? 
stores all that energy into the spring. Um, uh, first, we have to do our collision. I got a little excited there. So we start with total momentum MV, and then since we have an elastic collision, an inelastic collision, the bullet gets trapped in here. So then we have M plus M times V, okay? So those two are equal to each other. And then after the collision, we have a new, whatever that velocity is, V final. And we say 1 half M V final squared is equal to 1 half K X squared. So we can work backwards with the K and the X and determine what our final velocity is. Um, and this mass here is uh, the combination of mass plus mass, okay? And then uh, work back there to figure out the mass of the wooden block using those two relationships, okay? Delete. Trash. Next. Okay, in a ballistic pendulum experiment, a small marble is fi fi fired into a cup to the end of the pendulum. If the mass of the marble is this and the mass of the pendulum is that, how high will the pendulum swing up? The marble has an initial speed of this. Okay, um, so you get the cup here, shoot the marble, doop, hits the thing, uh, goes up into the air. How high will the pendulum swing? It's going to have mgh at the end of this. It's going to have one half mv squared after the collision, mv initial, and then m v final here with the combined masses of the cup and the pendulum and uh, the marble and the pendulum. And then so you set those equal to each other, then set those equal to each other, and you divide the problem into two parts there. Okay. Next, Kyle, football player, leaps straight in the air with no horizontal velocity to catch a pass. He catches the ball precisely at the peak of his jump when he is 0.538 meters off the ground. He hits the ground away from 0.049 meters away from where he leapt. If the ball was moving horizontally when he caught it, how fast is the ball traveling? Okay, so he's up in the air, and then he falls down here. Um, and in that time that he fell, he moved this far over. So you need to figure out how fast was he moving to travel that distance. And rate times time is going to equal um, 0 0.0409 meters. Okay, so you can solve for, uh, this is T here, you can solve for the final velocity, um, but you have to figure out how long it takes for someone to fall. Uh, so uh, V mm, is equal to the square root 2GY. Okay, uh, you can solve for, no, we don't want that one. V is equal to acceleration times time. Um, nope, we want this one. X is equal to 1 half AT squared. Okay, in this case, Y. So we're going to fall 0.538 meters. We can figure out how long it's going to take to do that. That time times the velocity is going to be the distance that it travels. And then that velocity is MV. Okay, is the final momentum. So you're going to have the initial momentum of the ball coming in and combining with M plus M, the mass of the ball and the uh, football player, times velocity, and then that'll give you the uh, what you need. Um, next. A linebacker is running directly toward the sideline of a football field. He tackles the running back. Uh, tackles the running back, moving this straight, blah, blah, blah. As a result of the collision, both players momentarily leave the ground, go out of bounds at an angle relative to the sideline as shown in the diagram. What is the common speed of the players immediately after impact? Um, so we've got 7.07 .07 meters per second. And then, so this is an MV thing. You do your MV, do it in X, do it in Y. And then that gives you a vector. And then you can solve for using the X and Y components, what the angle is, and then length of the vector V final. Uh, the square root of the one squared plus the other squared. Okay, next. Uh, the mass of a particular eagle is twice that of a hunted pigeon. Suppose the pigeon is flying north at 16.9 uh, meters per second when the eagle swoops down, grabs a pigeon, and flies off. At the instant right before the attack, the eagle is flying towards the pig pigeon at this angle below the horizontal at the speed of that. What is the speed of the eagle immediately after it catches the prey? Okay, so again you're going to split this up into, um, it's got V, two components of V. Okay, this one has only got one component of V. So you're gonna have initial momentum, M, V, X, and M, V, Y. Okay, your two components, and then you're gonna have a final component after you catch the bird of M plus M, V, X, and M plus M, V, Y, okay? And those are your two components, and set them equal to each other, 
uh, before and after. Okay, and then don't forget to take into account the pigeon's uh, velocity. Okay, that's it. Bye.